Hi, it's great to see you again. Today, by popular request, I wanted to share with you my tips and recipes for an elegant make-ahead brunch. I'm serving cantaloupe wrapped with prosciutto, a creamy gratin of eggs, store-bought croissants with homemade strawberry butter, a yogurt and homemade granola parfait, plus coffee and mimosas. I think you'll find this party is completely stress-free because you can make at least some of the dishes up to five days ahead of time. We're going to start with the gratin of hard-cooked eggs. And the first thing you will need is a 9 by 13 baking dish and you want to grease it really well. Then you need eight hard cooked eggs. And I cooked mine earlier just to save video time. And what you do is cut the eggs lengthwise in half and arrange the eggs yolk side down in the baking dish, just like this. And then we're going to make a wonderful sauce to pour on top of these eggs. So I'm going to move you over to the stove top. What we're doing is making a bechamel sauce, which in this case is gluten-free. So what I have here is two cups of half and half. That's half whole milk and half heavy cream. And you want to bring it just to a simmer over medium heat. And then you take two tablespoons of regular cornstarch and just enough water uh, to make a smooth paste. So you just whisk that together. And as soon as this half and half starts to bubble, throw it in. And the cornstarch mixture is going to thicken this very quickly. But you do want to stir it as it bubbles for one entire minute. As you can see, this has already become very thick. So now I'm going to turn off the heat. The half and half mixture is still quite hot, but off heat. Add one cup of grated Swiss cheese. You could use Gruyere cheese here. Just whisk that in. And the cheese will melt very quickly. Then add a half teaspoon of, let me show you the jar, Dijon mustard. It's going to give the sauce a little kick. You can add more than half a teaspoon of the mustard if you wish. Then I'm going to add just a scant quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And of course, nutmeg gives us a glorious perfume. And finally, add a nice pinch of salt. Oh, maybe three quarters of a teaspoon or so. And there, the sauce is finished. Pour this velvety, very fragrant bechamel right over the eggs. There we are. And then top it off with a nice big handful of either shredded Asiago or Parmesan cheese. I'm using Asiago here. So that's about a cup or even a cup and a half of the Asiago. I like a lot of cheese. Now, if you're going to bake this dish right away, what you do is bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes. Now, since I'm doing a make-ahead brunch, I'm going to cover mine with cling film and pop it in the refrigerator. And you can make this dish up to 24 hours ahead of time. Now, instead of serving something sweet for the brunch dessert, I'm going to serve cinnamon maple granola. So it's a healthy-ish dessert, and I'm going to be layering it uh, with yogurt. So the granola is really easy to make, 
and you can make it three, four, or even five days ahead of time. And the first thing you need to do is preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I will be baking this on a large baking sheet, and I've lined it with parchment paper, only because I don't want you to see how badly stained my baking sheet is, okay? So now, in this bowl, I have four cups of old-fashioned oats. And I'm going to add one cup of sliced almonds, and one cup of sunflower seeds. Told you this was healthy-ish. And one cup of shredded, unsweetened coconut. Yum. I'm also going to add one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon. You can add a little more cinnamon if you like. And I'm going to give this a quick stir. Stir in three-fourths cup of oil. Now you could use coconut oil or you could use organic safflower oil. Yeah, granola is really fun to make and the variations are endless. Now, add one third cup of pure maple syrup. This is going to give it just a slight bit of sweetness. And pour the granola onto the baking sheet. Oh, this smells wonderful because of the maple syrup and because of the cinnamon. And then spread it out as evenly as possible. All right, I'm going to pop this into the oven. This needs to cook for 40 to 45 minutes, but I'm going to take it out of the oven after about 20 minutes, and then I'm going to give it a little stir, and then I'll return it to the oven. Okay, so this has been in the oven for 20 minutes. So I'm just giving the granola a quick toss. This is going to help the granola to cook evenly so you don't end up with, well, burnt pieces. Okay, and then this goes back into the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. All right, the granola has finished baking, and as you can see, it has turned a beautiful shade of golden brown. It's very crisp. Now, this is the time that you could add some dried fruit, and I was going to add some organic raisins, but, well, let me talk with you for a moment. I decided not to add the organic raisins or any other dried fruit because for the brunch, I'm going to be serving the granola with yogurt and I'm going to do it parfait style in a glass pedestal dish and I'm going to put fresh fruit on top. So I think no dried fruit for this granola. And now what you do is let this cool to room temperature and then transfer it to either a Ziploc bag or a glass container like this. Oh, look at this. See, these have stuck together. You can break these up. I'm actually going to eat this. Mm. Delicious. And then, transfer, if I can get a hold of this. Oh, this is really delicious, you guys. Transfer this to the container. And you, if you have stuck on pieces like this and you're not going to eat them as I just did, just break them up. Probably have granola stuck to my lips, but I don't care. Um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to serve this on the morning of the brunch. So I hope you'll keep watching. We have two more recipes to do, but I thought we should take a break right now and set the table. The plates are the anchor 
for the brunch party. And the theme will be blue and white. So I'm using my Liberty Blue dinner plates here. And this soup terrine is going to be used for a flower arrangement. Six knives, knife on the right, fork on the left. A spoon for the granola finale. I never, ever put forks or any other silverware on top of the napkin because that's just more work for the diner. They have to remove the fork and then move the napkin. So the napkin should either go to the left of the fork or if you don't have room, it can go on top of the plate. And I need to check my Emily Post because I'm not really sure where the coffee spoon should go. So I'm just putting it to the right of the knife. I was lucky enough to find these Liberty Blue cups and saucers for $2 each at a collectible shop in Albany, New York. $2 each, can't go wrong with that. Normally, the water glass would go on the right and the wine glass would go to the left of that. But since we're having coffee, I'm putting the coffee and its saucer on the right, just above the knife and the spoon, and the water glass to the left. And I'm putting the champagne flute between and behind the coffee cup and the water glass. Well, it's Saturday morning. Tomorrow is the brunch party. So I'm going to start a flower arrangement in my soup tureen. For this arrangement, I'm using chicken wire to hold the greenery and flowers in place. And for the greens, I'm using hostas, ferns, and boxwood that I clipped from my garden. For the flowers, I'm using pink limonium, pink alstroemeria, and miniature white roses. Purple pink chrysanthemums complete the arrangement. Well, it's only store-bought flowers and some greens that I clipped from the garden, but I think this soup terrine arrangement turned out pretty well. I'm going to bring it into the dining room. Next, a quick trip to my local farmer's market for some croissants that I will serve with homemade strawberry butter. All right, we have our croissants. So now I'm going to make this really incredible strawberry butter. Now the butter contains only three ingredients, strawberries, butter, and confectioner sugar. Super simple. Take six to seven fresh ripe strawberries and dice them. In the bowl of a stand mixer, add one cup of room temperature butter and a half cup of confectioner's sugar. And I did sift this sugar first. And then we're going to beat this. I kind of made a mess over here. We're going to beat this until it turns light and fluffy. It's like making frosting. Okay, we are light and fluffy here, but I think I want a little more confectioner sugar. I want this to be a fairly sweet butter. So I'm adding, oh, just a scant half cup. 
Going to beat that in. All right, looking good here. And if this tastes good with about one cup of confectioner sugar, just imagine how good it would be with five cups. Now scrape down the bowl and then you can either fold in the strawberries using a spatula or just lightly blend them in with the paddle attachment. This looks really good. And scoop this into a pretty bowl. And you guys just know that I am going to lick this spatula when I turn off the camera. And then cover this with cling film. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator so it's ready to go for tomorrow's brunch. All right, it's Sunday morning. Brunch guests are coming. So the coffee is brewing and I'm going to fix some cantaloupe melon wrapped or draped with prosciutto. I think that'll be a nice addition to the brunch. So you want to cut the cantaloupe in half and then remove the seeds. I'm using an ice cream scoop and cut the cantaloupe halves in half. And then cut each quarter into half to make eighths. And use a knife to cut between the flesh and the peel like that. And then either drape the prosciutto over each cantaloupe wedge or if your prosciutto is long enough you can wrap it around each wedge like that. I think this looks pretty nice and I can tell you the combination of the sweet cantaloupe and the salty prosciutto is just heavenly. And here's the game plan. Pop this into the refrigerator until your guests arrive. Also, preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. That's for the gratin of eggs. And while the oven is preheating, go ahead and assemble the granola parfait. Now for the parfait, you want to use a clear glass bowl, if at all possible. A trifle bowl would work very well here. And you want to make layers. So first, a layer of yogurt, and then a layer of this crunchy, munchy granola. And then add another layer of yogurt. Add another layer of granola. And then finish it off with some fresh fruit. There goes my oven, preheated to 325. And I'm going to garnish my parfait with some fresh raspberries. And some fresh blueberries. The layers look very pretty in this bowl. I'm going to pop the gratin of eggs into the oven for 25 to 30 minutes, just until the, the cheese melts on top and the top browns a little. Of course, we can't forget about the orange juice for mimosas. And brunch is served. I'm so glad that you could join me for this brunch party today. If you picked up some tips and tricks along the way, I hope you will like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to tap the little bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Cheers.